Hi there. I made a, a vase and this is out of cedar. And I have to admit I was quite surprised at how well this turned. The only thing I've ever made before with cedar was some garden benches and things like that years ago. It always struck me as such a coarse wood that I didn't expect it to turn very well or finish very well and it came out pretty nice. I also had the chance to use this extension for my sanding disc that I made just a short time ago. So I hope you'll stick around and see how this came to be. Sit back, relax and enjoy. I have a piece of cedar. It's seven and a half inches long, five inches in diameter. I've knocked the corners off of it with the table saw just to make it a little easier to start. I don't believe I've ever turned cedar before because it's so coarse, I've steered away from it. I think it's gonna be a difficult thing to turn. But if there's one thing I know about, it's how to use sandpaper. So I hope you'll stick around. Let's put this between the centers, put a tenon on one end and see what we can come up with. First thing I wanna do is round this over. I'm gonna be turning it at 1000 RPM using my spindle roughing gouge. Now I'm going to use my skew chisel with a peeling cut to clean up this end and put a tenon on it. Before I reverse this, I want to do some shaping down toward the tenon. And I'm going to be using a skew chisel, at least for some of this, just because I need the practice. You never have too much practice with a skew chisel. I'll be turning at 2000 RPM to start here. I'm going to take a minute to do something else I need practice with apparently. It's called sharpening my tool. Alright, there's a fresh edge on here. Now let's see how this works. That cuts so much nicer. Now if I was just a good enough turner, I might be able to take good advantage of that. This is much nicer cutting I'm getting. Just got a little bit of a divot left in here that I need to go past, so I'll just keep contouring this. That just does not want to go away. I'll have to keep giving it a few more tries. I don't really want to just fill that with something. 
I like to get it down to just the wood. Alright, I seem to have gone past that point, so now I'm just going to try to do some finish cuts on here. Oh, that's looking real good. I just noticed that there's a very fine crack right here. It's almost unnoticeable, but I can tell on the end that it's going in at least a quarter of an inch. Now I hate to do this because CA glue can stain wood so badly, but I'm going to have to dribble some in there and see if that's going to fix this problem. I really can't think of anything else to do with it because it's such a small crack. So I'm going to put some fine CA glue in there let it set, then I'm going to sand this, and I'll be back to show you what I come up with once this is sanded. Alright, I have this sanded to 400, and as I sanded, this crack here became more and more prominent. So I sanded some sawdust into there, filled it with CA glue, and it's made a bit of a dark blemish there, but I'm hoping that's going to work out after I put some finish on. I'm going to start with a coat of my sanding sealer, 50-50 mix of Zinsser Seal Coat and Methyl Hydrate as usual. Methyl Hydrate's not good for you, so I'm wearing rubber gloves. And after I put this on, I'll let it dry, then sand it back to 400 again, and then carry on with my finish from there. dry and I'll be back for the rest of the finishing. looking pretty nice. Didn't expect much from cedar. That's looking good. I'm going to be using my spindle gouge at 2000 RPM. better already. Alright, I'm going to reverse this into the jaws of my chuck. Start working on the top. Alright, I have it reversed into my large jaws. And they're closed almost entirely. It just barely was large enough. So I'm going to use that. First thing I'm going to do is mark this with my skew chisels. Very jagged. I just want to get a nice straight line around here and then I can start taking this away.
Now I'm going to use Forstner bits to start cleaning the bulk out of here. 250 RPM. It's always easier to hog out a lot of material with bits if you do a series of increasingly larger bits. Here I've gone with four different bits. I started with one and three sixteenths inch, then one and eleven sixteenths, then a two and a half inch bit, and finally a three and one quarter inch bit. Now I've got the wall at the bottom there just just at a half inch thick. Well, I'm going to stay with that and now I'm going to try to taper it from here with turning tools. Up there right now it's at just under seven eighths of an inch. Got a little bit to take off here. I want to face this off first. 1000 RPM with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'll make sure that I have the flute closed totally, which means the flute is straight up and down. And then as I start to cut, I'll open it up a little to get some cutting. And since I'm cutting cedar, I didn't expect it to be too terribly smooth. It's not too bad on the outside, but I'm going to take a little bit more off, try to get some of this out of here. Whoa, for a wood as coarse as this is, this is looking pretty darn good. Now I need to make a mark one half inch in from the edge and that's approximately what I want to have for thickness of wall. Now it's time to start taking that out. I'm going to start with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge, but I won't be able to get in there very deeply and it's going to be hitting on here. I don't have anything with a sharp enough angle to go much deeper, so I'll eventually have to go with scrapers. But I will start with this and see how this does. As I turn, I'm trying to watch that my bevel is running parallel to the outside. I have moved the tool rest inside as far as I can and it is just barely clearing the bottom. Now needless to say I've got this tightened down as tight as I can because if it moves just a hair there's going to be something catastrophic happen to this piece. It's time to check the thickness of the walls. Fairly even there. And it's close enough to exactly half inch for me. Sandy will take care of the rest. Now I need to, from here on, I think, scrape in there. 
I'm going to be using this easy wood hollowing tool. This is not really what it's meant for, but it's got this flat bar on it to put on the tool rest, and I think it's going to work that deeply better than anything else I have. So I'm going to be trying this now. The turning in this part I'm very pleased with. As coarse as this wood is, I couldn't ask to be much smoother than that. Now it's time to start hollowing. I need some light inside there and I'm hoping this little light I got from Ikea a while ago and put magnets on the base will work. Just need to find the proper place to put it right underneath the tool rest. Oh yeah, that's going to work great. Now let me try a little more scraping here. All right, I'll just clean the dust out of there and see what I've got. I think that's about the best I can do. Well, I don't think I'm gonna get anything better than what I've got there now. Doesn't feel too bad at all. Now I've gotta come up with fabricating something for doing the sanding inside, as my fat little mitt is definitely not gonna go down inside there. Time to work on that idea. The sanding disc I'm going to use to sand the bottom of this vase is three and three-eighths of an inch in diameter. The inside bottom of the vase is about three and a quarter. So this is just slightly larger and before it hits the bottom it's going to be sanding the inside of this as well. I'm starting with an 80 grit disc. I'll work my way up from there and I'm going to be turning this at 250 RPM. I'm going to use dust extraction right here, which hopefully will take most of that dust away. Alright, it's going to take a little while, but I can already see a difference in there. So I will continue and I'll be back when the sanding is complete. I have Yorkshire grit used, and now I've got Hampshire sheen. And I'm just going to polish that by putting this cloth on this stick and just holding it in there. And I'm turning it at 3000 RPM to make sure I get lots of friction in there to heat it up. And I must say, I'm pretty happy with that. I have my vase reversed into my donut chuck. This donut chuck is probably one of my very favorite jigs for turning. I can't imagine a better way to turn the bottom off and finish it. If you don't know how to make your own donut chuck, I have a video and I will put a link to that in the description box so you can make one of these. They are so handy, I can't imagine being without it. Now I'm going to be turning at 750 RPM and I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I want to finish this off, take a lot of this out here. I have my live center in here for support for a little while just to get going here, make sure it's going to be stable.
Now it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to pull the tail stock out of the way so I can get rid of this nub. One more thing I want to add about the donut chuck. When I did the video showing how to build it, I had not recessed for the nuts. So they were sticking out a little proud and you could tear the skin off your knuckles quite easily. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you decide to follow my video to make one. Recess the nuts. It'll help a lot. I really prefer turning much faster than this. I'm going to turn this up to 1000. I usually like 2000 because it'll give a nice clean cut. This is not turning out as nice as I would like. And that is a little nicer. Still need some sanding. But I'm going to put a couple of rings on here now for decoration and a recess for my logo coin. I'll be back. Now I have it signed, dated, and the species of wood identified. My logo coin is in, and it's time to take it out of the donut chuck. Well, I think that turned out all right, particularly since I didn't really expect too much from a piece of cedar. My only complaint with it at all is that it's fairly bland looking. It's not, a, it's not the kind of grain you'll get with maple or a few other woods. So I'm thinking maybe this isn't really finished thinking I might want to put something on here to just embellish it a little bit. And if I do that, I'll bring it back and show you what I've done. So thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll come back next time. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day in your shop and be safe. Take care now. Bye-bye.